Hello everyone, my name is Devin Adams. Uh, I am a uh, instructor over here for Dynamic Worldwide Training Consultants in Tempe, Arizona for Fortnite products and also several other ones. And uh, in this set of videos, we are going to play around with the DLP feature on the FortiGate. So uh, what is DLP? Right off the bat, it is uh, short for Data Leak Prevention. And the whole idea here is we have certain files that we don't want leaving our network without some kind of um, notification or even sometimes blocking it. Now normally DLP is done at the end user perspective. Okay, So this isn't a replacement for uh, DLP from like a uh, Windows environment or, or something like that. I know Windows Server has some great tools for their digital rights management but at least on the FortiGate we can uh, at least put up some kind of levels of control whereas we see some piece of data maybe leaving the network in an unconventional channel and we usually do that by matching our firewall policies right so for example the warehouse shouldn't really have credit card information leaving um, leaving its firewall policy right so we can put a DLP filter on there for credit card numbers or social security numbers or we could write our own actually um, there's there's a couple of different options here so I did have one of my um, past participants have a great question about okay if we have a picture file how can we get that picture file to, to pick up on our sensor right what happens if we change the file type what happens if we uh, uh, embed it into another file alright so instead of just maybe giving a, a textbook answer I thought you know what we'll go ahead and we'll see so I made this quick topology here uh, we have a FortiGate on the edge right we have our WAN our WAN traffic here and then we have a couple of PCs that we are going to apply the DLP sensor to so in this video and I usually break these up in a couple of them so they're not so long um, we're going to configure the DLP sensor on the FortiGate and then maybe try a couple a couple of them out right um, and then we're gonna maybe go into a different level of intrusiveness in other words there's different levels of DLP inspection that we can do that are more resource intensive um, we're gonna explore those and then I'm gonna take a shot at fingerprinting now I have not done this outside of a lab environment but essentially it's it's creating a share and pointing that SMB share onto the FortiGate to essentially go out there ever so often and and hash the files so uh, what's neat about this feature here is that it, it takes a file it breaks it up into chunks and if it detects one of those chunks it will notify the sensor uh, I'm, I'm thinking that maybe number three here and we're gonna configure it and test it in separate videos might be able to pick it up if it's been embedded in a, in a file so um, anyways let's go ahead and begin alright so here we are on our Windows machine and I'm going to log into our FortiGate okay so 10.0.1.254 we should get a login here there we are and I'm running 40 OS 54 in this demo there it is now before I can actually do anything what is our goal here well we have a very priceless uh, JPEG that we're trying to protect so let me load up that share here uh, where is it there we go see where it says share me oh look at look at this beauty so this is an authentic DaVinci JPEG of the Mona Lisa so this is the file that we are sorry guys if you took my classes they show a they show a JPEG of the Mona Lisa yeah so this is what we're trying to detect protect so on and so forth crossing through our network and pictures actually propose a pretty big challenge and simply because it's not like it's a credit card number right that's going through a, a message it's an actual file uh, with a very particular um, file type and so on and so forth so there she is alright and I'll just leave her on the on the desktop here so okay uh, for starters the first thing that you'd want to check is your security profiles and if you do not have DLP listed which it doesn't look like we do yeah you, you need to set it up so or you need to turn on the feature the feature select so let's go to system let's go to our feature select and let's select let's see here where is DLP 
right there. All right, we'll hit apply. You should see the GUI refreshing here. And now it should be one of the options we see on our security profiles. So the whole idea here is that we're going to create a sensor. And a sensor is a collection of essentially patterns that we're going to be looking for. And then we can place the sensor on our firewall rule. So something to take into consideration, by the way, is DLP is resource intensive. So you're, you're just not going to want to throw it on anything and everything. You're going to want to be as granular as possible as you're matching the traffic in your firewall policies. So, for example, have a firewall policy just for the uh, just for maybe the accounting department, right? And anything that sends out via email for the accounting department that has credit card information in it, make a log file of it, right? At least there's some accountability of, okay, why is that accountant sending out credit card numbers, all right? Um, anyways, and you also want to test before you deploy because, you know, you want to make sure that the sensor is actually picking up the information you want. So um, just something that we can, I should throw out there. So, all right. Now, I said that I was going to start. Well, let's go ahead and create the sensor. I'm just going to call this, uh, I don't know, Mona, Lisa, or, or something, right? And... Uh, there we go. We have a new sensor. And um, I'm going to start with the most less resource intensive ways of detecting files. And I'm going to keep going down. Uh, but essentially, there's the name of our sensor. And then I'm going to create new to, to do a pattern match. Now, you can have multiple ones represented. And we're going to just keep on adding these in here as we do new filters. And it is a top down approach. Okay. So, but here is the first. Uh, the first essentially sensor that we're putting in our sensor. I don't know how you'd want to say that. Um, but this is the file matching that we're doing now. Messages are, are information contained within an actual text file or document or email. We're going to do file types, all right? And we're going to say specific file types. And the, m the most less or resource intensive is going to be a, a file name match. So this one, or this kind of sensor, is not going to be um, scanning the file for like its actual, its actual type of file. It's just looking for what the file is named. Okay. So uh, here we're going to do a, a Mona .jpg. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and then let me uh, zoom out here. My resolution isn't letting me see the action. You see where it says action down here? I don't know why my my uh, my web browser here is not showing me the the full thing. But uh, let me let me just explain a little bit more. So examine the following services. Now these are the channels that are going to be scanning for the data. Uh, for example, here let's turn off the ones we're not using. So I know that this isn't going through email, so I'm going to turn off email. Okay, it might go through FTP, so I'll leave it there, and it might go through the web, so I'll leave it there. Okay, uh, but normally you would make sure that uh, you select only the channels that apply. All right, so and I'm going to actually block this. Now you can quarantine IP addresses because if something's been picked up, right, uh, what is actually left or what is in the process of leaving your network that you don't want it to. So quarantine is a good option there. Uh, to give you a little bit more time to investigate, right? Just make sure that you get notified of it uh, when it happens. But here we're gonna we're gonna do select, and then there should be an actual OK at the bottom there. Let me see if I can tab complete. There we go. Using these virtual machines using VNC can be a little tricky, but there we go. That is our our very first file type. Once again, it's gonna be top down. So let me hit apply. And now we have to go match it with the firewall policy. So in this environment, I just have one. So it's not a big deal. Um, but remember, in real life, you're going to want to be as granular as possible. You don't want everything being scanned. So let's go to our IP4 policy. And let's go ahead and edit the internet access. And then in our security profiles, we are going to say, scan this for DLP. Which sensor? The Mona Lisa right and we're gonna hit OK now 
if you have traffic being inspected or if you have um, users using SSL TLS most likely they are for their traffic you have to have deep inspection on in order for DLP to work because if it's encrypted it can't scan for file types or messages so um, I'm, I'm not doing SSL deep inspection but in real life you know that's something you have to take into consideration so all right and I'll go ahead and I'll just log security events here and I'll say okay and now it's applied now it's gonna start scanning for files named mona.jpg so let's see if it actually worked so um, let's go ahead and I have another machine up and running a Linux box there we are and a lot of times these sensitive files are going to be on the share drive and why is my Mona Lisa missing um, <laughs> sorry guys I just realized I dragged it off the desktop uh, or out of the folder into the desktop here so let me let me put her back I'm gonna just do a copy my bad um, and this is just to simulate like a, a company network share right um, there we go and that should be back there once I hit the refresh there we go so here's that that priceless Mona JPEG that we don't want leaving the company all right so I'm just gonna copy it to my desktop for simplicity reasons and let's go ahead and try to try to have it leave our network so we can get notified here so now I wrote this web page based off of a, a lab that we had in class so um, I just did some kind of like shady website kind of kind of example so hopefully I don't offend anyone that watches this but here's our our heavenly file submission whatever someplace somewhere shady okay <laughs> Uh, and and we're gonna go ahead and have the the file leave via holy spiritualness so now why did I pick this because you know what a lot of times um, files get leaked out of our systems in the most unconventional ways now it could be something like Dropbox but it could be something like a, a submission form or or you know some kind of bulletin board form um, anyways but let's go ahead and and see if we can't slip out with the the Mona Lisa here let's go ahead and submit it and right away it, it detected it as a data leak alright so it went ahead and blocked it it gave the um, IP address of the client right and the server the actual website that it was uploading to and then if there was user authentication there would even be more information there now if we had the IP quarantined this user wouldn't be able to do anything for the set time that we quarantine them that way we had to have time to investigate that's really all up to you so let's go ahead and see what it looks like now on our on our FortiGate so uh, if we go back to our FortiGate and we go to our log and reports alright you see how there's no data leak and that's only because we need to refresh the GUI so once again the FortiGate doesn't show you anything in the GUI until something happens um, no, oh, there it is. Data leak prevention, and we see the Mona Lisa trying to leave, and it hit the filter one. So there you go. Uh, we can even look at more details here to get a more specific ways it was trying to leave. All right, it was blocked. But let's see how how easy that is to circumvent so I'm gonna rename Mona to something and see if it catches it so and once again because it's just doing simple file name matching there's not a lot of load on the on the FortiGate so but then again there's not a lot of intelligent either intelligence so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, close this and I'm gonna rename Mona to something like uh, I don't know Joanne all right see if it doesn't detect it there so and I also closed it to, to do the caching make sure it didn't cache that that web page and then let's go ahead and submit Joanne so um, as you can see your data has been saved that's supposed to be a little evangelist it's been uploaded so by simply renaming that file uh, yeah it got through you're probably thinking to yourself wow that's that's 
pretty bad. So, and it, it's really not. If you think about it, if if we're just doing this to kind of catch the last, you know, out the door kind of kind of situation, this might be fine unless you get people that are maliciously trying to steal the data, or people that are trying to circumvent the the, the scan. So, um. Anyways, so uh, there you guys go. That's the first one. In the next video, just so I can break these up a little bit, we're going to test maybe searching by file type. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, um, and stop the video there, and I'll see you in just a few moments, and we will now try to maybe be a little more specific. Okay, all right, I will see you guys then.